After the massive U.S. Fed rate hike of 75 basis points last week, traders and overnight swaps are pretty much fully pricing in a 75 basis point rate hike here in Canada next round on July 13th. If you are looking at real estate prices, it might not seem like a buyer's market yet because prices don't appear all that different for now. But even with the baby step rate hikes that we saw in March and April, the reality is that the tables have already turned and we are now in visible buyer's market territory. So in this video, I'll reveal what's really happening lately in Toronto real estate and then take a deeper dive into how higher interest rate hikes will continue to take us further into buyer market territory. Before I continue, if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you see more videos like this made specifically for real estate investors in Toronto. Real estate data is a lagging indicator of at least one to two months. And as of the latest May data that we have, we have only experienced two smaller rate hikes totaling 75 basis points. But even then, it was clear that the Toronto real estate market had already been shaken up. So what exactly happened? No, we didn't see more listings. In fact, in May, we actually saw a very similar amount of listings compared to the same period last year. The bigger change was definitely on the demand side where buyers dropped by 30 to 40% on average. And it's really because of this big drop in demand that takes our sales to new listings ratio in Toronto to below 50% and that is a clear indication that we've already entered buyer market territory. The biggest pain is being felt in the suburbs as of May with prices going down 17 to 19% from their peak. And this is drastically higher than in the 416 where house prices have dropped by less than half of that going down around 8%. If we were to slice things another way, you'll notice that condos in general have been seeing a lesser impact compared to houses. Keep in mind that it's because they have gone up a lot less throughout the pandemic too. Sold prices are coming down based on data, but there's still a lot of listings out there that are priced very high, referencing comps in early 2022. Basically, sellers are still holding out for higher prices, and so we are seeing higher days on market the list low plus offer date situations that don't get sold and so they get turned into any time offers at a higher price that the seller actually wants to sell for. But these are generally leading indicators that the market is about to drop further and with more major rate hikes in the pipeline, prices are probably gonna come down more very, very soon. Besides expecting a jumbo rate hike of 75 basis points next month, we are expecting a target rate to go beyond 3% based on the U.S. Fed's latest projections. As of last week, the Fed is expecting rates to go up to 3.4% by the end of this year and 3.8% by the end of next year. And for us in Canada, we pretty much have to match those rates closely to prevent our currency from tanking, so we're probably going to get similar target rates here too. Here's the thing it's much easier for the real estate market to absorb the impact of interest rates when they are normal steps of 25 basis points. A 25 basis point rate hike on a $1.2 million house means an increase of a bit over $100 in monthly mortgage costs. But it gets increasingly hard when each step is 75 basis points, which is close to a $400 increase all in one go. Even if someone is able to afford higher mortgage payments, what you end up seeing is that new buyers will run into a lower borrowing ceiling from lenders, and that is a concrete force that will take real estate prices down. A one-time bump of 75 basis points in interest rates mean that the mortgage capacity gets reduced by 5%. When target rates get to 3.8%, that ceiling will get reduced by a much bigger 19%, and so prices will have to come down a lot more based on the combined forces of weaker holding power and quickly dropping loan ceilings from new buyers. I'd say the biggest impact is always in the end user markets because the homeowner needs to absorb all of the increased costs. If variable rates get to 5.3%, we're looking at $1,150 of increased mortgage payments on a $1.1 million end user home from today, so prices would have to come down 22% just to keep expenses the same. On the other hand, Toronto investors are benefiting from rental income 
which does help shoulder some of the increased costs that actually changes the picture quite a bit. Right now, we are seeing around $500 of positive cash flows on a $1.1 million investment. When variable rates get to 5.3%, what we need for a property to cash flow is for prices to come down 13%. Now we are in a rebounding rental situation in Toronto as well, and if rents come up by another 5%, prices will still cash flow with a much smaller 8% drop. So simply put, we do expect investment properties in the 416 to experience a much softer landing compared to the general real estate market. But even so, it is clear that prices will continue to tumble everywhere with these major rate hikes in the works, and so it is completely reasonable to see investors in wait and see mode. We do see people holding a lot of cash and obviously waiting too long in this highly inflationary environment isn't the best idea either, so we recommend that you get ready to buy with pre-approvals lined up because honestly, it's already a buyer's market right now and we're gonna see better buying conditions over the next weeks, which is gonna come a lot sooner than many people expected because of these exceptional steep rate hikes. Yes, we are in extraordinary times right now. The market is very shaky and prices are pointing down, so it is very crucial to be wise with your investing decisions. If you are contemplating investing in real estate in Toronto soon and want to talk things out, just reach out to us. We'd be happy to look at your situation and help point you in the right direction. Once you're ready to buy, we can help match you with the best investment property that fits your needs. And that's not all. Our team also provides renovations guidance, leasing and property management if you need it. So just connect with us if you want to learn more about our services by heading to the link in the description below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and look for us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you want to hear from us more regularly. I wish you all the best in your real estate investing journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.